Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. Today I get to show you a new method to painting a comic book mini using a no tan study. So let's dive in and find out what I'm talking about. When painting comic book minis, or minis in general, we all face the same issue, lighting. When it comes to complex objects like a miniature, lighting can be kind of tricky. Which parts get highlights, which parts get darker, and is there shadows, etc, etc. I was doing some research online to see how people paint in minis, and methods they use for lighting. Majority of the folks use the Zenithal painting method, which basically requires you to spray an airbrush at a certain angle using various shades from dark to light. It works, but it's kind of boring. This opens up to the whole underpainting world, where the idea is to paint a mini like it was affected by some sort of light source. Now the art world is much larger than just minis, so there's a ton of concepts out there that many haven't tried or know about. One in particular that doesn't get as much love as the others is called the Notan. Notan is a Japanese term meaning light dark harmony. The core concept behind this is to isolate the light and dark parts of a piece of art and from that study make a good contrast of the two, basically analyzing the composition. A lot of Notan studies are using two-way, meaning they only use black and white, but there are more that uses grays in between. Today I will be using a four-way or four-value study. I found very limited posts online about this and applications of minis. The goal is to use the Notan study to develop a better way to do highlights and shadows. Let's try it out and see if this method could have any benefits. For this I'll be using my new Baron Zemo Mini from the Crisis Protocol set. And yes, my Crisis Protocol set is finally here. I thought about doing an unboxing video, but there are a ton out there already and no one wants to see me open mine. This is a pretty cool mini and it comes with the core set. Let's do a quick review of the mini first. The mini comes on a plastic sprue and the rulebook inside details how to put it together. The first thing that bothers me a little bit is what parts they separated in the sprues and why. Looking at the elbow pads, they're the tiniest things ever. No wonder why they give you two sets of them. I guess the main reason for a separation is painting. But if that's the case, why split the sword arm like that? Other guess would be for customizing. Honestly, I don't know and I think they could have done better. I see similar issues with other minis too. For this process of work, I have to have Zima completely built and based. So I put Zima together with all the super small pieces. The one thing that I really disliked about the mini is that stupid rock he's standing on. They give you the street type concrete base look and then the small little piece of rubble. It seems so out of place and just kind of lazy. GW is notorious for adding random rubble stands like this on their stuff too. I was iffy about these bases at first anyways, but I decided I'll still use it. I'll just make it a little bit mm, better. That rubble pile had to go, so instead I used these small 3D printed pillars that I made and I had lying around already. I printed these a while back just for this type of thing. These look 10 times better than the random rubble pile. The first thing I do is primer and paint Zemo completely white. I want zero shadow or color, and I use my airbrush to do it quickly, but you can do it by hand as well. Now I want to create a picture of my white Zemo at different angles and apply a light source. I go to a dark place in my house, my bathroom, and set up a small box in the middle. I set the mini on top of the box like a pedestal. I then take my nice light I have and apply a light source to the mini. The light is angled a bit where I think it would make the most sense, like the sun or a street light. After I get everything in place, I take four pictures all around the mini. I try to make sure that I get a shot of every little detail. Obviously a larger model may require more photos. After I have the photos, it's time to do our no-tan magic. I first combine all the pictures into one. Using a tool called Inkscape, I do a trace bitmap operation and select the options gray. I set the scans to 8. This setting is where your mileage may vary. Usually if you have a perfect white background, you can go lower, but I had some things showing in the picture like the tub. After you hit OK, it's time to look at what we have. I look at each specific area where I know I'll have different colors. I see how the dark and light progressions happen, as well as how many iterations of color I would need. With comic book style, I like to keep it around 3 to 4 different shades of color. So what results did we get here? We can see the four angles that I took in the model and the no-tan study on each. Looking at the no-tan results, we get a pretty good split of dark and light colors. Zemo's right side is well lit and has most of the light, while his left side is dark, which makes sense due to how the light shines. What we want is a good 50-50 split, and I think this successfully did that. We can see his head where his face was quite bright is rather than the back of his head, which is black. Same how one leg is brighter than the other, or one arm compared to the other. What is the most helpful to me is how to analyze this and how the shadows fall in certain spots. For instance, take his jacket. The inside of his jacket creates a small shadow on his shirt as well as his neck. This information like this really helps you decide where shadows fall. 
Another huge benefit of the study, and I think many people fail at this, is the base. I know a lot of people like to paint things off the base, and I agree it's easier and you can get a lot of full coverage easier too. But with the model on the base and using this study, I can see specific shadows. I see so many maze that have zero shadows from the model on the base, and I admit I'm guilty of this too. This now gives a good interpretation of where the shadows will fall and how these complex shapes at different heights affect each other. See how the sword doesn't really cast a shadow, but his right foot does? That's valuable information to understand and how we paint them. Now these photos are more than just a basic study. These will be our reference photos during the entire painting process. From here we have two options. We can either paint the model using these gray tones and do glaze on top for color, or we can block in the color for each. I was going to do a sketch block coloring on this anyway since it was going to be a comic book style. So I decided to go with the color route because it gives me more freedom with color selections. Sometimes I like to highlight a color using different colors rather than just shades. Plus, painting in gray seems a tad boring to me, but I think I'll try that out eventually. Now the somewhat tedious part here is going through the model and painting each color. Since I'm doing inking on this mini, I automatically know that the black shown will be black from the ink, so I skip that and wait till the end. I start to darker colors and eventually work my way up to the lighter ones. Here's where you can be somewhat creative and mix certain hues and colors for highlights. One thing I did change later, and I don't show it, is I made the jacket and pants darker. The colors I picked turn out a little too blue and almost look like a jean jacket. A quick dark glaze on top darkened it enough for my liking. The only area I did a tad different was the fur. So the fur and other small detail things can be kind of tricky. Instead of paint, I used washes. I went from a light wash to a dark wash rather than straight paint. And at the end, I did a little dry brushing on the lighter sections to give it more pop. For the most part, this was pretty straightforward and easy. And here's what he looks like so far. Pretty awful, to be honest. But sometimes you have to make a turd and polish it. Now to the inking. Our note hand is very helpful here. We can see where to place the shadows. So that part is straightforward and takes the guessing kind of out of it. This is very super helpful. I do the standard inking and go around the model making outlines and small details here and there. For the fur I add dots just like we have in the comics for Baron Zemo. For the base I paint it in the same way I do for most, just keep the no tan study at hand. I add some grass and give it a little color. And we're done! So we utilized our no tan study and properly created the right amount of shadows and highlights. Here's what the no tan study looks like next to the mini. You can tell how the shadows and highlights follow the no tan pretty well. Out of curiosity, I wanted to see what the original Notan study would look like to another from the finished product. And here it is. You can tell they're similar, but definitely not perfectly matched. I think the main reason is the colors from the second Notan study. The original Notan study was a complete white model, so it wasn't all that surprising. Plus, the inking really changes the outcome as well. Overall, how did the Notan study turn out? Let's talk about the things I liked. First, it accurately told me highlights and shadows. I knew exactly where they went and how they interacted with each other. It also told me that my lighting was good, and it had a good arrangement of dark and light areas. Overall, my composition was well made. It gave me shadows for my base, which also gives me more immersion to the mini. Overall, I assumed less, and I had more accurate portrayal of how the mini should look. Now to the things I didn't like. It does add more steps to the overall process. Now I have to paint the mini white, take photos, and create the no-tan study so definitely more time. It also took me longer to paint the mini as I had to follow the no tan study. But it comes down to, would I do this again? And the answer is definitely. I think this was a huge benefit, especially with the style of painting. I would like to try the gray route with the color glazes too, but I like the color blocking method a lot. I think he turned out great and I look forward to doing this more on other characters. The one thing I would change next time is layer my highlights a little bit more rather than painting them side by side. I spent too much time filling the white spots than I should have. But that's about it. This study was super helpful and I plan to continue using this for minis in the comic book style. I hope you liked this video and enjoy my small experiment with Notan. Thank you to my patrons and thank you for watching.